So, for probably the last, I want to say, three or so years, I've had one pedal board. I've used that for everything. I've used that for uh, what I play here at home, my recording, and, and multiple bands. I've been at one time two or three bands, and I've used the one pedal board for all of them. I've used it for uni when I was studying music. I've used it for everything, and it was one board. Now, to some people, that might not be too crazy, only ever having one pedal board, but I like to play a range of different things, and I've played in bands that play a range of different things, and I only did it with one board. This is that pedal board. Now, obviously, it hasn't always looked like this. A lot of these are most uh, recent additions, but this is the size. This is a pedal train, Novo 24, and this is it. <laughs> now, as you can probably tell by my strenuous voice, this is a heavy motherfucker. The actual pedal board isn't that heavy, but what I've got on it is heavy. I've got lots of pedals, and I've got that loop switcher down the bottom, which is really thick and really heavy. I got it second hand. It works fine, except for one loop is broken. Um, another thing I constantly need to replace, and I've got a big power supply in the back. So this thing is heavy, it's bulky, and it's big, and... Despite the actual pedal board itself just being, you know, some welded together pieces of aluminium or aluminium, if you're nasty, I have quite an emotional attachment to this pedal board. It's done so many gigs. It's, you know, been on the floor of so many dingy Brisbane bars. I recorded three different EPs on this. I used it for my very final performance uh, at uni when I was studying music. And, you know, I've done a lot with this pedal board since I've had it. But the time has come, I'm getting old, not really, but I'm getting sick of carrying around a big giant pedal board and loading it into either the back of my car or a cab or something. So, in an unprecedented move, I am downsizing my pedal board. I'm going from the Novo 24 to the Novo 18. Now, I'm sure many of you are wondering why bother downsizing. Well, the simple thing is, through all the last three years, anything I wanted to do has had to be combined into the one pedal board. So I like to play a lot of like ambient, like droning, kind of like creative looping type stuff here at home, but I'd never had a separate pedal board for that. So I'd have to try and combine some elements of that into my gigging pedal board. And, you know, over the last few years I've played in like punk bands and stoner rock bands and stuff like that. And so... It's always had to be like a combination of all what I'm feeling kind of wrapped up into one. And I kind of, it was big enough, but then it was like I would be taking this big pedal board to shows. And at the moment anyway, only using like three quarters of the pedals that are on there. There's always like a few pedals that don't really get used. So I figure, did some thinking and I think I should be able to downsize, fit everything I use on this, still have my loop switcher down the bottom. Because um, that's an integral part of my... It makes it easier switching live and stuff like that. And then fit everything I would possibly need on the rest of the pedal board. So hopefully that'll work. And then I'm going to do something very cool with my big pedal board. But that'll probably be in another video down the line. But for now, let's put together this one. So first things first, I've got to pull apart the old board. And then I've got to drill in the spot for the power supply on the back. <laughs>
so as you can see we have the power supply all drilled in got the two drill points there which you would have seen i have to tape this bit because i don't have a drill bit long enough to get all the way down there because the head of my drill is quite big um but yeah there it is we're using the one spot pro cs12 you can't really see it um that's what i had originally on the big board uh, i just thought i'd use it on here because i need as many outputs as possible um and the other board what i'm using the big board for i'm actually going to use two power supplies on that which will end up being more than this um but even though i'm probably not going to use because i've got two converters these are 18 volt plugs down here um even though i've got converters i'm probably not going to need to um use all 12 uh it's a 12 spot but this one's an ac so i'm not going to need to use all 11 um but it's just good i don't want to be daisy chaining stuff because you know dodgy club power suddenly your daisy chain pedals that didn't sound too bad at home are now creating this massive buzz so this has got plenty of power i should be able to run everything cleanly and have it be reliable not have any extra noise or anything failing on me which is essentially my thought process behind this board i want it to be as strong and reliable as possible i can just grab it and go and i can pretty much get anything i need out of it all right so uh, i'm going to whack on the velcro uh, i won't show you that and then we'll get to pedal placement and stuff all right here we go we've got a layout for now um i'm going to start wiring thing up i think this might be a little bit too tight so i'm probably going to have to change some things around but i'm thinking this is what i want so I'm going to start wiring things up, things might change, and then we'll check back in in a little bit. Alright, and here we are, ladies and gentlemen, all wired up and squared away. Uh, I was having some doubts, wasn't quite sure if everything was going to fit, but uh, we seem to have gotten everything in. Let's give it a quick plug it in first time, see if everything works. Alright, here we go. Alright, switcher works. That works. Alright. Tuner won't turn on unless there's something plugged into it. Miss the tuner. But apart from that, everything else is good. All right, I'm going to throw her on the floor, plug her in, and we'll uh, we'll go through some sounds. All right, what is up, everybody? Brendan from the future here, coming at you with um, a little update. So uh, the, the all the stuff you saw before of me putting the board together, I filmed maybe three or four days ago. Um, but then I had a few gigs over the weekend. I think I filmed that all on, like, Friday. Um, maybe it was Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Um, and then I had a few gigs over the weekend, so I was like, oh, okay, um, I'll just wait until after the gigs and see kind of what I need to, if there's anything I wanted to change about the pedal board or anything like that, so we're kind of here with the, I guess you could say the final revision of the pedal board, yeah, with the final revision of the pedal board, I tested it out over two gigs on Saturday and Sunday night, uh, and now we can, uh, go through it, so... Um, pretty much everything has stayed the same. I haven't changed any pedals. I'm happy with all the choices, uh, for the moment based on what I have. So I guess we'll just start with the signal chain. First up, we have the Fuzz Factory from Zvex, uh, which I kind of, I ride high, uh, that sits off the board and I ride the gate pretty high to kind of get the octave sound. And it's just a real kind of spitty, wiry fuzz, uh, which I use mainly for one song. But it's kind of a big sound for that one song. Um, and that sits off the board and is powered by battery because that's where the Fuzz Factory sounds best that way. So that's cool. We go into the Korg Pitch Black Tuner, which is fine. Just a small tuner fits on the board. Then we go into my loop switcher down here, uh, which is all mislabeled at the moment. I need to relabel it, uh, but I've just kind of memorized the slots best I can. So this first slot is powering the... Uh, it's not pairing, but it has the small stone from Electro Harmonics in it. Um, you know, as I'll kind of play each pedal as we go through it. So at the moment, I'm playing my Fender Jaguar, which is one of my two main guitars. I don't take two guitars to gigs. I'm not a I'm not that kind of guy. I take one guitar, either take my Jag, 
uh, or my Telecaster. Uh, this is a Japanese Jag, and the Telecaster is a American Special with Texas Special pickups. I'll swap to that at some point. Uh, and the amp I'm using is my Dreamtime Special uh, from Sleepwalker Amps, which is a really nice Dumble Overdrive Special clone, 50 watts, 1x12. Um, I usually backline when we play shows, but if I were to ever not backline, this would be the amp I was I would use. So I kind of just figured it makes sense to use it for this video. Now, I don't know if I've stated it um, before at any point in the video, but the whole purpose of this board is to just is just my gigging board stays like it is, and I take it, I can throw it down and use it for shows. Um, it's a bit smaller than the last one because the last one had some stuff I wasn't quite using for gigs on it, and so now I've got this. Just throw it down. It's got everything I need pretty much for a show. Um, yeah, it's not as big. And it's kind of designed to be run into any clean amp because like I said before, we backline a lot. Typically, either a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe or some kind of Vox AC15. I can kind of get away with either if I have to. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's get into it. This is just my clean sound straight up. Alright, and then I run the uh, Angry Charlie from JHS, which is a kind of Marshall in a box. I run that on all the time. So, it never it stays on for the entire show, never comes off. Um, yeah, and I have that after the... So, I'll, I'll leave it on for the sound examples, but then we'll go back through. But I'm just explaining... I'll, I'll get, when we get to it in the chain, I'll explain where it is. <laughs> So there, that's my bass sound. Alright, so we'll start off with the Fuzz Factory. I don't know if you can see my settings, but that's kind of what I have it. I have uh, the stability all the way up, obviously, because um, you don't want to self-oscillate, but I will manipulate that during... because the, the song I use this in, it gets kind of jammy at the end, so I'll manipulate it maybe at the end, or I'll use the mood, but we'll get to that. Drive all the way off, comp, compression, usually just kind of 12 o'clock, I got the gate around two o'clock, just enough, not too crazy, but enough to get the octave and the volume kind of set to taste. <laughs> Poor man's version of uh, um, Jurassic Park. I just kind of figured that out then, yeah. But that's pretty much... I mainly use it for lead. I don't use it for any chord stuff, so it can sound pretty kind of octavine wiry. But yeah, I use it for a whole solo jam at the end of one of our songs. All right, then we're into the tuner, obviously. And then this first uh, um, loop that is labeled octave fuzz no longer has an octave fuzz, but it has the small stone from Electro Harmonics, which I use, once again, I only really use in one song, but it's for this really slow phaser sound like the Kevin Parker type thing. <laughs> Fucked up the chords, but it's the <clears throat> trois phaser sound. Um, yeah, when we recorded our EP, I didn't have that, so I used a phase 90, but I really wanted the small stone, but I didn't have the small stone at the time, but that's why I'm using the small stone now. All right, drive is still the drive. This is the Black Country Customs TI Boost. So this is my main kind of sound. This is pretty much like 70% of the set. If I've got like for the big sounds, you know, because I'll kind of have it as it is now. Maybe like a verse sound or a quiet part sound. 
And then when we get to the chorus, I kick this on. This is always my, you know, thing. <laughs> So yeah, I'll kind of manipulate it each night um, in the room based on the amp and the guitar I'm playing to get it to sound kind of how I like it. Um, usually I kind of just keep the, the low and the high controls around 12 and just manipulate the mid switch. Uh, at the moment I've got it set for the, um, in a, it's a high mid boost, so it's more of a tube screamer, but it's not as nasally as a tube screamer, I think. And you have a bit more control over the other things. Um, yeah, and then volume and drive kind of to taste. Uh, and then we have the muff, and even though the big muff's over this side, it is actually before the anti timbers. The anti timbers last is essentially acting as an amplifier. Everything's running into that. Now this is the Fuzzlord MF MF4 from Fuzzlord Effects. Um, Jason sent this one out to me uh, earlier this year for a demo, I believe, beginning of the year, um, something like that. Uh, and so yeah, it's. A very cool Russian style big muff with a cool mid switch. Not sold on the graphics, if I'm being honest, uh, but it sounds good. Uh, this is how it sounds. <laughs> I'm going for like a kind of a... I love like stoner rock and stuff like that. And that's what I would normally use a Big Muff for. But in this band, because we're kind of like an alt rock, I'm trying to get more of a Dinosaur Junior vibe out of it. Uh, at the moment, I'm only using it really for one song, but it's good to have it. And there's some other songs we got coming up that I think I'm going to incorporate the Big Muff more into. Um, maybe I'll try out some other Big Muffs. I'm thinking about maybe getting the Garbage Face, the J Masker signature, just because I think that would be cool having like multiple volumes. And it'd be able to replace... Black Country Customs, possibly. Because it's got a treble booster built in, so it could free up some space for something else. I don't know. Let me know. <clears throat> Sorry. Let me know uh, if you've got that pedal or if you've heard good things about it. All right. Uh, now we're up to the amp drive loop, which has got the Andy Timmons uh, AT Plus in it, of course. But it also has the Chase Bliss Mood in it. Um, and I kind of use this just for, like, random bits to make noise at the end of songs or during like certain sections um there's one song where i'll kind of do a solo i'll try and mimic what i do and then i'll like throw the loop in Obviously sounds shit on its own, but during that bit where I'm like mucking around the pedal, it's like a chill bit and the band's kind of vamping behind me. Um, and I'll either do the mood or I'll just like get feedback from the amp, depending on how I'm feeling on the night. But yeah, typically use the mood. I also will set up the mood for like the King Gizzard thing where it's like boop, 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 with the delay. Uh, quickly see if I can... So 
So I set it up for that kind of thing. You know, the band's about to come in. One, two, three. I use that more in uh, the other band I'm in. Um, or I used to anyway. But um, yeah, it's cool to have that. It's just fun to muck around, fuck around. I've got another reverb on there if I want it for whatever reason. But um, as you'll see later on, just turn it on. I've got a really nice reverb. Anyway, after the amp drive, we go into the mod, which is at the moment got the Arion Stereo Chorus. I know before in the previous sections, I had the chorus and the mood in the same loop together, but I figured I always want to have the mood ready to go so I can just hit it because it like, you can go watch my demo, but it re it's constantly listening to what you're playing. And so I figured this amp drive loop is always on. So I put it in there. Plus the chorus, I mean, listen, it takes, it's got a... I love this the sound of this chorus, but it takes away a lot from your signal when it's on. So it's kind of like... The chorus isn't on, but this is just... I'm just going to turn the loop on with my patch cables running through the chorus. It just takes something away a little bit that I didn't love. And if I just wanted to use the mood, I felt like I was kind of sacrificing something. But when the chorus is on and you kind of ride the tone higher a bit, it kind of feels like... And the chorus adds so much space to what's going on, you don't really notice it when the chorus is on. So um, this is the Arion SCH1. I believe there's a, another one that's more sought after, the Z, SCZ or something. Um, this is the one I got. Um, it's a really popular chorus. A lot of people use it for the faux Leslie sound, which is exactly how I'm using it. So I'll play one of our, one of our songs. <laughs> It's the kind of... I don't know what I was doing towards the end, but it's, a, it's kind of like a fast Leslie thing. I've gotten a lot of compliments on that sound as well. A lot of people really like that. It's kind of one of those sounds that once you turn it on, you don't want to turn it off because it adds so much. It just adds so much space. It really thickens up and the movement. And like, yeah, once you turn it on, you kind of don't want to turn it off. And I'm kind of feel like I'm falling into a trap where I'm just going to end up using it way too much. Uh, we got another song where it's like, it's all, I'm using it for like 80% of the song that pedals on. Um, so yeah, I gotta watch myself with that one, but it's it is undeniably a nice sound. All right, uh, next we have the broken switch. Oh, there's nothing in there, but the switch um, is a bit dodged, so I just don't use it. Then we're on to delay. We got the old flashback, flashback two with the MXR tap tempo. I uh, had some issues with this. Got to the gigs on the weekend, and the tap tempo just wouldn't work. Now it's not a necessity. So I just kind of set it and forget it. But um, yeah, my TRS cable died. But now it seems to be working again. So... Just standard quarter note on the bog standard tape delay setting. I... Something about this tape delay setting that I just really like. It adds space without getting in the way too much. And I essentially just use it for leads and for solos and maybe some swells every now and then. That's just how it's basically that same kind of sound. And that's uh, how it works for me. All right, after delay, we have the reverb slot. Uh, we're using the... 
big trail from the slow from Wars audio. Um, yeah, this is cool. This doesn't get too much use. I use it. Um, I get reels like shoegazy during one of the songs. Throw on the big muff um, and the reverb for the solo, and just kind of noise away. And I use it for some swells and certain things. Um, it's got a really good sustain function, which I'll use um, every now and then. One of our songs it starts off with just our sorry starts off with just our singer playing on her own. She's just singing, and I kind of will do one of these ones. I don't play the chords, she does. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of uh, adds a bit of ambiance behind her. And then there's a bit at the end of the song. It's like a big section at the end. I'll hold the last note and ring it out. Um, but yeah, I'll do the kind of shoegazy thing. Yeah, and so that's just kind of... That's it, really, for that sound. Alright, and then very last... That's the last thing in the switcher. We go out of the switcher into the Strymon Flint, which I have always on a good old plate sound. Most of the amps I use do have uh, reverb in them. But um, I like, I like plate, so it's good to have it. Plus, I use the tremolo in one song. <laughs> This guitar makes you kind of want to play surf rock. But yeah, just a nice harmonic tremolo, I think. Oh, it wasn't. It's meant to be, though. Yeah, I really like harmonic tremolo. It's kind of like a... I'm not a massive tremolo fan, but it's kind of like halfway towards a univibe. Once again, not a massive univibe fan, but it's cool to have it every now and then. And this song's kind of like a... Kind of gave me like cowboy, western -y, kind of Mexican-y vibes, you know. Um, and so I thought some tremolo would be cool, kind of fit the vibe of the song. And it does. Yeah. Um, a lot of these sound examples sound weird because I do play a, a lot of lead in this band. And I kind of, if I'm not playing lead, it's just the general, the AT and the Black Country Customs or the AT and the Big Muff. It's like that 70% of what I do, the interesting things come during like the solos and shit, which sound weird on their own without the band behind them. Um, but if you would like to hear some of the sounds, go check us out. Follow us on Instagram. We're called Wetland. We are on Spotify. We will have more songs coming out in the new year. Um, unless this video doesn't come out until the new year, in which they're coming, which case they're coming out this year. But yeah, um, that's it. This is pretty much bog standard. This is, I could 
really distill it down if I had to, to just like a drive and a delay, like as long as like a dual drive, you know, I need a kind of, a, a, I need two, at least two stages and a delay and I could probably get through a show with that, but it's nice to have sounds and I get a lot of compliments and a lot of, you know, a lot of people say, you know, oh, it's, it's good to hear someone who doesn't just have like a loud, louder, and I think I was talking to one of the other local bands on Sunday night and they were saying, you know, they've just got quiet, loud and fuck off or something as the three sounds. But I've got people are like, oh my God, you've got so much nuance in your sound. Because I will use the, the boost function on the AT as well, which is kind of a different... Yeah, there's some... I kind of have this little jazzy solo bit. And I have a little kind of like country... And so for those kind of things where you don't want it, it's not a full-on solo, but you just want something to lift, the boost is good. Yeah, and uh, and I work the volume control a lot as well. In a kind of, yeah, it's not just a loud and quiet sound. I like to have a bit of nuance in there, some in-betweens. Anyway, this video has gone on for too long already. My name is Brendan Statham. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for what I'm doing with my big older pedal board because I'm doing something very cool with that. Uh, if this video comes out, this video will definitely come out before Christmas because it's like three days before Christmas and I'm not going to have time to edit it before then. But uh, and letting, if it comes out in 2020, have a good new year. If it comes out in 2021, I hope you had a good New Year's. And I'll see you all in the next one.